Hello everyone, welcome to Dorman Likely's D&D uh, Everything Show. Um, in this episode, I want to give a primer on for a DM starting in Fantasy Grounds um, running a game. And, and I thought it would be a good idea because I realized after uh, running the game for a couple of years and then passing it off to the next DM that they're like, whoa, learning curve. Because uh, it, it takes long enough to learn to be a player, but then when you're in a DM, you have so much more you have to deal with. You know, window management is a big thing, uh, which I still haven't mastered. I'll have hundreds of windows open and and then lose everything. Uh, but um, and I by no means know everything about this this program, but I am able to run the game. Now, I tend to be a big planner. I, I'll like make my own like adventure modules with stories and everything. But you really, if you just want to run a game, like if you come from being a pen and paper DM, going to Fantasy Grounds, um, perhaps, you know, a lot of times, uh, and I, I would do the same thing in the pen and paper D&D, you know, you're, you're just winging it, role playing. You know kind of where they want to go. You have a big fight maybe planned out. But then along the way, some bandits, you know, accost them on the road. You just open the monster manual, uh, uh, throw a few bandits on a spreadsheet or, or, you know, note their hit points down, write it down, and, and go. Well, in Fantasy Grounds, it's a little more complicated than that, you know, because on your table, you just break out the miniatures. Well, Fantasy Grounds, you have the combat tracker and all of this other stuff, and it, and it handles all the XP, and it does everything for you. But getting to that point is, is where it's hard. So what I would say is, you know, you probably want to plan out a few encounters um, that you can just drop in on, like, some, some generic maps. So we're going to kind of go through that. But let's start the whole process. I got a player logged in. When the player logs in, you've, 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 you've created your campaign, right? When the player's logged in, they will appear. They will appear up here in the upper, watch the mouse, upper left upper left hand corner there. Now before I really dive into this I should mention that I know a lot of people are like start without the extensions but I have some extensions on here um, and there, there will be links to these forge links in the in the description below um, that I, I, I highly recommend we you go ahead and get. Uh, one of them is um, it's kind of a fun one. It's generic actions. And what that does is the players will see these. And these are really handy. Um, for instance, if they want to dodge, this will automatically, you double click that, it will automatically add that effect into the combat tracker. So uh, creatures attacking them will. Um, automatically roll on disadvantage. It's really cool. Um, some of these are just like, they'll just throw something in the chat. It's like, I'm dashing. That's my action. Um, search. These will also do rolls. Um, oh, look, they added a few. I wonder why this disarm button looks different. Oh, it's a toggle. Okay, see, that's new. Um, but that, I find that pretty useful. Uh, next is next level XP automation. Um, and all that does is uh, automatically put in how much XP they need for the next level. Um, and now, if any of this is like, what? Like, if this tutorial is kind of more for someone who knows a, their way around Fantasy Grounds a bit. Like, you've played as a character or something, and maybe you're new to DMing. So, um, if I'm going too fast, there may be even more broke down tutorials to introduce you to the UI, but I'm just going knowing, thinking that you've already done this a bit. Um, the next one is the uh, Mad No. I have a couple of Mad Nomad extensions. Um, they keep these pretty updated, so they're 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 always pretty safe to use. This one's Coin Manager, and that just it just changes how the coins work. Like, say you someone gives you ten platinum pieces, you just do that, add coins. And then it tells a DM in the chat that the player's cheating and adding their own coins and such. So there's that. And then the big one, um, there's there's two big ones coming up, is uh, Mad Nomad again, the enhanced encounter window. It just makes life a lot easier. So I highly recommend that one. 
don't worry, I'll show you what it does because we're going to be making some encounters. Um, and then requested roles. This is the best. You get this requested roles here, and you want Janice to make a saving throw. He won't see the DC on his constitution. You do this, and, and it sends it to him. Um, oh, I have a setting off. Oh, my pending rolls. No, all right. Well, anyway, I have a setting turned off. <laughs> Great. Um, is this it? Oh, yeah, there it goes. And it pops up a window like this, and then the player would just click that roll button. Um, and he failed. It won't tell them that. Oh, no, it did tell them that because I forgot to do this. Anyway, we'll talk about that more as well. I'm just giving you a quick intro. And then lastly, uh, and this is a nice to have because, um, you know, especially early on, actually throughout the campaign, you're you're often going to want to, um, man, my window's too huge. Oh, no, that ain't going to work. Oh, boy, I just copied some. Goodness gracious me. Sorry, I had to shrink this down. Okay, I'll cut all that out. So it's the... Um, NPC maker and this is really handy because it will um, you can generate NPCs from a template if you remember to load the module um, or you can just drag an NPC say you, say you want a uh, good old acolyte if you drag that in there it'll start with an acolyte but you say you want to give the acolyte some extra powers this NPC maker here maybe you want the acolyte to have intelligence saving throws because and maybe you want strangely smart acolytes and they have intelligence saving throws. You can add skills, you can add attacks, and it will calculate the uh, challenge rating once you get everything set up and going. I uh, won't talk too much about that. It's just one I recommend. All right, so let's dive in. You've just started your campaign. Your player's logged in. Um, perhaps it's a new player, so let's start with that. Um, so a new player, I, I would recommend when, you, when you're first creating your campaign before you even get with your new players, you, you go ahead and create one using this, um, I, I highly recommend using the character wizard here, right? And here's why. It really handles a lot of the stuff for you, um, rather than just clicking new and then trying to fill it in the old fashioned way. This, this kind of goes through the whole thing. It could be a little wonky, but for the most part, it works. So, you know, I'm going to create George here. Um, and uh, we like to use dice roll. Now, this is really cool. This does the uh, 4d6 drop the lowest. You get to see a whole bunch of dice. And then you can rearrange your points based on what class you're thinking of playing by moving like that. We'll move the 15 over there. I moved it back. Uh, don't have a race yet, so you can't do a racial adjustment. But then up here, you see, and you can kind of go in order from left to right. Uh, I don't think it's required. So next you pick your race. It's always a good idea to pick race. Let's say this George is a dragonborn. And then you have an option of a sub race. Um, oh, I never played a dragonborn. A gold dragonborn. Okay. So it automatically applies um, the racial mods there. Um, you can change those, but that, that's kind of up to the DM on how it's run. Additionally, these little dragons here, if you're using the D&D um, &D official theme, um, the dragons indicate links. So if you click this, you can learn all about the gold dragonborn. You have resistance to fire damage. Or you might want to learn about the dragonborn. They're kind of like draconians, but without wings. Okay. So next you would move to your class. And let's say our dragonborn wants to be a wizard. So now you see you have two choices available of skill. Um, just randomly pick some things. Now you have a level one wizard and some more buttons have appeared. So then 
Next, you see there's a green check mark, so you've picked your class. Next is background. Uh, let's say this person was a sailor. I didn't really get anything for Sailor except what was automatic. See, I have a, a trait called Ship's Passage now. And it just applied that automatically. Uh, inventory. You get to pick your starting equipment. See, this is really cool. So let's give him a Scholar's Pack, a Dagger, and an Orb. Ooh, Spellbook came for free. So now you will have all of that in your character's inventory. Don't close this window, by the way. Tell them not to close the window. If they close the window, then, then, then they have to start all over. And that is pain. All right, so next is spells. This will only appear if you have spells. And this is the main reason I try to get people to use this because it, it tells you, you know, you're always trying to calculate how many spells you have. This will tell you, you have six spells and three cantrips available. And then you can filter it by um, first here's your cantrips and you just hit the little arrow just get some random cantrips here that this is a terrible character already and then level one um, good old burning hands I never go anywhere without feather fall uh, he's a dragonborn he'll probably need to disguise himself always get detect magic um, and for the treasure Whores get identified so you can identify their stuff and make some money. And Tasha's Hideous Laughter, which was the crappiest magic card. Not crappy, irritating. All right, so now you have your spells. Three of three, six of six. Done and done. This is a bug. It'll say you have feats available, but obviously until the new rules come out, you don't have feats at level one. So then when you hit commit, you will have yourself a fresh character without a portrait. Um... And if you've ever made a character at this point, you know you just double click here um, and give yourself a portrait, which will automatically add it to the token, but you can also replace that. All right, so there's George. He's a level he's a level one wizard, dragonborn that looks like a monkey. All right. So that is the the character creation. Now, options. Might want to set some options. So let's look at this options thing because this is daunting. Um, you may find this irritating. Auto center map. That every time when you switch players in the combat tracker, it will center on whoever's up. Uh, I'm going to leave that on though. Dice manual entry off. That's for people that like to roll physical dice. Um, prompt owner to roll saves. Uh, this depends on your style. I'm one of those DMs where, uh, in essence, the way Fantasy Grounds defaults is when a character, ca a PC, casts a spell on an NPC, the PC rolls the save for the NPC. It's very that sounds weird, but that's that's kind of, you know, you click the spell and it auto-rolls. Um, and the same goes for NPCs, if an NPC is doing something. Because sometimes you don't want the character to know they're making a saving throw. So I, I'm leaving that off. All right, always show manual dice entry fields. Don't worry about that. Um, target, remove on miss. Yeah, multi. Leave that as default. That's really cool because what happens is... Um, It'll uh, it'll untarget if you have multiple things targeted. It'll untarget the ones that miss or make their saving throw. So say you cast fireball, or not fireball. Uh, say you're I don't know. You have some sort of special arrow attack, and you you shoot at three, but you only hit two. It'll untarget one. That way, when you roll the damage next, it'll only damage the two you hit. Um. Set GM voice to active CT. I don't know. I've never used that. Show all whispers to GM that. I leave that off. I mean, the GM is is a god and knows all, but still. Show GM rolls. Let's, um... All right, you turn that on, and you get a dice tower. And everyone gets a dice tower. So I... I or turn it off. So I leave it off. I mean, on. <laughs> so that way... 
You have your your. Well, hold on. Let me try something. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Scratch that. I don't need a dice tag. The GM, if you turn that off, your rolls are automatically hidden and the players can't see them. Um, and that's a good setting to have because often you'll just want to throw dice out to mess with them. I like to uh, occasionally do a uh, requested roll, select all, and then... Uh, wait a minute, where is it? Perception. And then you do that. I, I have control of three of the players. And then over here on my other computer, they're regular player rolls. Now you can't see it on the other screen, but the um, the dice are grayed out for the players. They don't get to see anything. So yeah, leave, leave that however you want. That's just what that does. Show results to client. Um, yeah, that, that saves time. Um, that's just, it'll tell them if they hit or miss. Experience chart type, self-explanatory. Experience messaging, I like that. Um, party, show characters to clients. Yeah. Dice tower, you can turn off the dice tower for everyone with this one. Okay, yeah, that's for, that's for the players. You will never see the dice tower if you have show GM rolls off. Okay. Sorry, this is... This is the exciting part, this options. I'm trying to, let me see if I can find. Auto NPC initiative is really convenient, especially if you're dropping an encounter with eight NPCs in. It auto rolls their um, initiative. Enemy health player display. You can do detailed is, is pretty cool. Detailed will, will, will has more levels of healthy um wounded dead or dying so detailed has more levels of like severely wounded i can't remember exactly we'll see it a bit in pc numbering if you have an encounter with seven orcs we'll call them orc one orc two orc three orc four wound categories same up here is combat npc rolls variable or fixed if you use variable it rolls um if you use fixed it uses that um, average amount in the monster manual, the thing in, in parentheses. Um, there's also an add-on you can get that'll set, you can set that to max. Oh, no, wait, this is their roles. Maybe not. All right. Y'all are like, he does he really know? Look, these options are a big pain if you don't have these set up right to drag your game to a halt. Ring bell on turn, yes. Players are distracted. It's just like show turn order. That's fine. That should be self explanatory. Bar colors. These are all things you can tweak. Show effects on notice. I'm not certain. Show notice to players friendly. Oh. Skip dead non ally. If you're running a big fight and you need to leave the bodies there for some reason, that's what you would you would turn this on. Uh, skip hidden actor I will often do if I don't want you know, I will turn that on in the middle of a fight if there's a like an NPC that you don't want the characters to know is lurking around um, because then it will just there won't be that moment where the players are like whose turn is it because it it's on that hidden player right or NPC uh, the problem with that is you'll it skips them so you'll forget if you want to have them moving around you'll 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 want that off so stop it round start um that's a good one when you get to fighting dragons and creatures with legendary actions or, or um lair actions that that happen this gives you a chance to stop and remember to do that um otherwise in the beginning you're probably not a big deal all it does is when it gets to the top of the round everything stops token um this is just stuff for the token um i usually set that to 80 percent um effect icon size it's just little visual things party vision and movement turn that on oh turn that off got it all right this is 
This is um, players can control each other. I think. Show name, title, title hover, off. Ti uh, tool tip. Title will always show the name on the token. It's a good one to have on unless you have limited resolution. Um, this is a mod, I think, but I like the fumble and crit. That that automatically, if you get a crit or a fumble, it'll roll on a table and um, give some text and sometimes apply an effect. Auto death rolls, that's up to you. Uh, if this is on when the player is dying, every time it's their turn, it'll roll a death roll. There it is, NPC hit points. This is what I thought. So NPC rolls variable is not you don't want to do fixed, otherwise it will the hit, the damage will always be the same every time they hit. That's no fun. But NPC hit points you can do standard, which it drops them in with that number um, trusty acolyte here. So every acolyte that goes in the um, combat tracker will have nine hit points. Um, you can have max, so everyone would have 16. Or you can have random and it'll roll their hit points 2d8. Plus any constitution if they have any. I personally like random. I don't know about you all. It makes it more fun. Sometimes there's like goblins with one hit point. Let the players feel like they're badass for a minute. Roll initiative on each round. This preset. See, sometimes they actually give these options names that are understandable. Massive system shock. You got to do this at the low levels because it's so much fun for the characters. Because, say you hit a goblin and do three points of damage, you're like, oh, well, that's half their hit points. They have a system shock roll, and sometimes they just die. They just, I don't know, have a heart attack and die. Diagonal distance. This is a rule of much debate. You can use default. Um, or 1.5, which is, I know the rule my DM likes to do. Raw is a fun one, but then you get some crazy range numbers. Um, default just literally uh, is the easiest. I'll just leave it there. Use currency weight. <laughs> That's fun at higher levels. Attunement slots, it's up to you. Encumbrance, you can choose the different encumbrance rules. Um, and all of this. Requested roles. Now this is for, these are for add-ons down here. So if you don't have these add-ons, you won't see it. Broadcast me message when user cancels a roll. I like to turn that on. NPC, prompt owner to roll saves. Oh, shut that off. Otherwise, every time an NPC has to roll a saving throw, you have to manually roll it. View sidebar button. That's this. That fortunately is on by default, so you don't have to worry about it. These uh, for the generic actions, just leave those at uh, leave those set. Okay, so those are the options, and this will hopefully have been the most boring part. I the the question is is will I have to come back to um, to these options at some point? Yes, probably. Okay, let's move on. So now you have a party, you have your characters. Um. So the first thing you need to do is um, you get them in, in the party sheet. And you can do that from the character screen. If you wanted to add George, you just drag him in there. And now George is there. Um, I don't know where his portrait went. It's not my fault. And then the combat tracker, notice it doesn't have George yet. Oh, that's because I didn't grab George. Delete that guy. That guy doesn't have an icon. All right. This is a, a me fantasy around things. I often fail at clicking and dragging. There we go. George is in the party sheet. Click, drag there. And here's the thing, and I don't know if you all have noticed this with your computer. Sometimes if you try and click and drag too fast, it's gonna drag something else. So that's all you do. Once you get your characters in the party sheet from here to here, and then from here to the combat tracker. This is combat tracker here. The swords this is the party sheet and in the party sheet if you are a player you will notice you've got some more tabs here um, inventory 
you can see everyone's inventory, how much money everybody has, what they're carrying. Um, and if you want to give them, you know, a, a magic item or something, and you just click the little dragon, drag it on there. And then if the player is like George, is like, I could really use that because I don't actually have armor. See, I just typed two letters, J-J-J-G-E, and, and it autofills. And then if you click this little guy down here, this little guy, it will distribute. Just give it to George. Also, this button is pretty handy. It's used to sell items. And this handy little button identifies all the items. Also, it will divide up the gold evenly, as it can. And then you see over in the chat, everyone got 10 gold pieces. Um, this is just marching order. That's a, a handy screen. Um, Autofill formation column. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that fun? They've added some new things or I never noticed them before. Uh, but this is one you use a lot. So this is the XP. And you will see that my auto XP did not fill in. Maybe I forgot to turn it on. Anyway, so here, say they do something cool. Like they figure out a puzzle or something, and you want to give them 500 XP for that, right? And then you, you, you fill in the name, the XP, and click Award, and it gives 100 XP to everyone. I don't know why the auto uh, the auto XP isn't showing on this, but that's not a big deal. Okay, so that's the XP thing. And when they complete encounters, um, you can either drop the encounter in there, but with this add-on I have, this is gonna be really cool. It will just, there's a button you press. It'll throw the encounter in there. And then um, there's also another button in the encounters you can click to award it. But if you forget that, you can always click award there and it'll award any unchecked um, encounters. XP here. As a DM, you probably won't keep that open. That's the window management I was talking about. Definitely won't keep that open. So the combat tracker, open all the time. All right, so now, for the people that have skipped to this part, this is, um, welcome back, this is the uh, setting up of an encounter um, and, and a quick go over of running the combat. This is the, the nitty gritty. Okay, so you have your party. Your characters are ready to do some fighting. George is level one. He is going to get his ass whomped. So the first thing you need to do um, is, well, the first thing is probably just grab yourself a combat map. So if you, if you don't, you might check your images. And you you know maybe you you bought some map packs. Uh, FG Battle Maps is a good one. So see there we go. We got a little battle map right here. Players do not see it yet. So first you have a map, and you want to add your your baddies to it. Okay, that's player vision. So they have line of sight and everything. So now you need bad guys. So you've got your map. I just pulled one from images. Then you go to encounters. Um, and click add. You may want to make a folder. These are going to get a lot of encounters there. Um, all right, I'm going to close that. I'm going to try and keep these windows organized for you guys. All right, so what you'll see immediately if you didn't have this enhanced encounter window before is um, the differences. One on the right here, there's all these. Uh, I only ever use the map and sometimes the parcel one. And then there's a lot more buttons down here. All right, so for map, for instance, if you drag, grab that icon, drag that there. That has never worked right. It's there. You see that that map is now in your encounter. So 
if you when you pre-make this encounter for the game you open this encounter it will have everything you need to get it going all right but we need some bad guys so let's open the NPCs window the little skull here and who should we have them fight well you can if you know what you want to fight you can just type it in there uh, let's say we want to fight a bunch of orcs but these some of these cats are level four so let's uh let's grab a war chief and grab an orc and that's all you do now first off I like to have them unidentified you can set them to unidentified and it'll show up as unidentified creature um, you want them to be hostile if you want to fight and the orc war chief has a, only has a a clan of one orc so let's let's set it up here now will my party be able to handle this let's click the challenge click this refresh it says it's deadly It'll be worth 1600 XP well those orcs they have those battle axes they hit hard all right so orcs tutorial so I know what to delete this later all right now if you're worried that you're gonna you can always lock it that way you can't accidentally change things but that's that's fine to know. so we got our NPCs to close that now we put them on the map um, so what you do is you see you got these little icons here let's put our war chief in a square here and then an orc I'm always having them hiding and then another orc and then another orc and then another orc this orc will be a decoy see I'm gonna make him a decoy for an ambush alright so there they are and if you want to see what their line of sight is you have to have the proper settings on so that being said click the um, unlock button and then you will see you see that right there unlocked you will see this show up and this is the map editing so the first thing you want to do is realize that oh okay never mind I see the problem let's turn some lights on here so these are lights I am gonna throw some lights in my dungeon here there we go now we can see work slime site so the first one is just a regular light uh, token light token vision you won't use these too much unless you really want to get to it and ambient lighting which you're not gonna have inside a cave and there's pre there's presets for all of these dawn sunlight dusk moonlight um, these are these presets are mostly just for fun um, but anyway I threw some light on the situation now you're immediately gonna be like oh things are gonna not work until you go back here and then you're in like in play mode one last thing uh, this map has a grill grid built into it but if you don't see a grid just click the last option here that says grid in the eye and there's the grid now for the rest of this I would recommend just play with these other things you can draw on it you can add uh, effects and stuff like that uh, be careful if some of your players have slow computers line of sight you could do a whole tutorial on that but if you get a map get one that already has it all right and to get that out of the way I'm gonna lock that back all right so now I got my orcs positioned but now that I've been playing with it if I click off this orc, eh, that's what it looks like would look like to the players, uh, kind of. If they actually if they click off the player, I don't think they see anything. So, but if you want to see what it looks like as a player or as your as your orc, you click player vision preview mode. Shut that off, then you get your DM mode. Um, this is token lock, which. Um, prevents the players from moving themselves without it being approved 
Um, I don't know what that is. Huh. Oh, I think you can shut off your pins. All right, anyway, so now you got your encounter. Um, but now let's put the players in. So what you do is you grab the, don't grab the, if you grab the link, I do this all the time, it, it, it will probably just, it will just, it used to, it, it, it won't do anything. So grab the player's face, Sarah Connor here. And let's say they've just come from over here. Now you can see what she sees. If you really want to, you can turn that on. So she sees that orc. She's like, oh, guys, there's an orc. Come on. Grab Jan Janus. Ravina. I think these came with this sample campaign. Tanner. And Curious George. Which, by the way, that random token just worked out for that. So they're here. Now, lock this. And here's what happens. If you... If you close this, watch watch the orc tokens because they weren't really there. That was just placement. All right, so get your get your encounter back. Orcs tutorial. See, I'm glad I gave it that name. Now, here's where the enhanced encounter window really comes in handy. First thing you want to do. These buttons are kind of in order how things go. Oh. This is cool. I've never used it. All right. So first, you add the encounter to the combat tracker. Bam. But they're all hidden right now. Okay, right? Next. Um, well, it does that automatically. Let's see what this button does. Well, looky there. That shares the map with the player. So I got my player open on the other screen. So now all the players can see the map. And you'll see your logged in players. The rest of these are D, uh, DM controlled, but they'll appear in a little tiny icon there. Also, it shows them all my maps. I like to have that. If it's unidentified, then it says unidentified map image. Uh, there's, there's what they see. Okay. So we got our creatures. Um, you can make them visible one at a time. This is unidentified creature number five. So they can see him. So over here you have show NBC. It's a little eye right there. So yeah, now the players will be able to see that orc. If you click Sarah Connor, she's like, oh, hey, an orc. All right. Now on, on their screen, you're really not going to get the full picture, so you just have to trust me on this. So, they've already got their initiative, but your players um, j don't have initiative yet. So, let's move this down here, close this. So, I want my encounter window open, but it doesn't have to be that big right now because we're going to do the fight. Um, oh, what did I just do? All right. I need to... Apparently, I was testing a fight. So... You see here it says round three. You that means you you forgot to to reset your round. So go to initiative. See that menu. The handshaking is initiative. And the clear all initiatives. That resets it to round one. Unfortunately, it also reset my creatures, which is very annoying. I'm okay with that. So go to requested roles now. If you don't have requested roles, ask everyone to roll initiative and you can roll your, we'll start by that. We, you can roll your creature initiatives, roll NPC initiatives right there, that button. As a matter of fact, I'll use that. So there, it rolled all my creature initiatives, the, the little mask. For the players, though, I find this to be the fun way to do it. Open requested roles. Seriously, this is such a good add-on. You should get it. And you want to select all the PCs. See this little check mark? Bam. All PCs. And then down here, this little tiny initiative button. Click that. And all the PCs will get alerted that it's time to roll initiative. 
I often do that when they're parlaying with the bad guy. I'm like, no, this is about to be a fight. All right. So, all right, Fantasy Grounds trick number one that you may or may not know does not work with requested rolls. Since we got that button, I tend to, to close that until I need it. Now, to kick off combat, that's this guy right here, next actor. And it'll ring a bell for that person. In this case, I am the one playing Janice Woodguard. Um, and he ain't gonna do nothing. So unidentified creature number one. There's, there's two ways you can run. Well, one, he's not visible. Um, but when he starts moving, you, you could make him visible in case, because he's, a, I'm going to do that because he's about to go in the line of sight of the PCs. All right. So you saw the map jumped to him. That's the option that some people may not like, but it does make it easier to find your NPCs when they're all unidentified. So what I tend to do on Windows, it's Alt. And on Mac, it's Option. Is you hold down Option and drag. And then it's just like when you're a player. And then you can let the option go, and you can waypoint up. And of course, you're the DM, so you approve that move. But then you can see how far you're moving if you don't want to count grid spaces. So OK, this guy comes into view. And then his line of sight, he's got a good beat on Sarah Connor. So he's going to throw a javelin. Um, if you don't have a range modifier, you will see that Sarah Connor is pretty sure Sarah Connor's out of range 3120 yeah so what you do is you go down here and click disadvantage or whatever rule you're using and then since it's ranged sometimes these will be different so be careful you see where it says attack plus five you double click that this is way different than a player well, look at that. He hit Sarah Connor. So then you double click the damage. At this, you, that's the only thing different than the player. You don't really have a character sheet. That being said, from this, if you have a target, don't forget targeting is exactly the same. Control click. Um, you you can you can also do your attack here by double clicking the text. Missed that time, but I'm gonna. And the damage. I'm gonna damage her anyway because I don't like her. All right. So you can and then you can do strength checks. Well, I thought maybe not. Intimidation. Some things are rollable. Some aren't. Um, that used to be. Otherwise. So this is a good time. Let's go real quick. Uh, faction. Targets is just the same. Uh, you got space and reach. Uh, say you randomly gave your orc a halberd. You just change that to 10. And then when you mouse over him, you see that that box there is a lot bigger about his reach. But he, he doesn't have a halberd, so his reach is 5. It will not update that automatically, unfortunately. Um, offense, that's the new one. You got all this stuff. Um, attack, damage. Attack, damage melee and then arranged attack damage um, there it is these are your defense abilities if you need to roll a strength check that's where you do it uh, everything else is the same effects you have a lot more control than the players do all right so when it gets to Tanner here and this is the, the really the last little bit um, Tanner when he moves, as you well know from being a player, he, he does his thing. He's like, I'm going to double move up in here. Get right up to that or get my ass whipped. So now you have the player has made their move. And, you know, you, you got to decide, well, you didn't see that ooze right there. And you may want to say, well, you can't do that and just exit off. Also, you can mess with their move too, but, you know, that's mean. Um, and then you just approve that move. Um, often you will have players be like, I'm moving. Try and get your players to, to play like you're at a table. <laughs> but yes, so that's simple. And then Tanner may do his attacks. 
even though he uh, dashed and can't, but maybe he wants to anyway. He's cheating. Um, so he swings his morning star and fumbles. And there's our fumble table. Fumble effect. Oh, it did the whole thing. Staggering in pain. Um, now, see, that is not going to add an effect. That is something you're just going to have to remember. Uh, your opponent parries your awkward attack that causes you to hit yourself in the... Nice. Oh, I had that happen, except I had it happen with a dagger. Half movement, minus four to all actions. Uh, you can try and spin up an effect if you want. Sometimes it's best just to, just to do it yourself. I mean, you can always just click the modifier and do minus four every time you roll. Okay. So, that's combat. Um, say that they uh, they kill everyone successfully. Or the orcs surrender for some reason. Whoa, oh, wow, that war chief was going to give him a fight. All right. So when something dies, you just hit that, and it takes them off the map. And that's fine. That's not breaking anything. It's just making it easier. You may want to leave them there so you remember where a body is for some role-playing reason, but I, in this case, am not. So now we're up to the next button. The combat is complete. The next button here is Add Encounter to Party Sheet. You click that, and then what happened there, I showed you this earlier, see, Orcs Tutorial. It's not yet awarded. You don't have to open the party sheet. You just click this last button. Award XP. Look, they misspelled counters in the tooltip. And it divides up the XP to everybody. And if anyone levels, that next level automation will tell them that they have enough to level. So that's that's combat. Um, and you know, you made you made the encounter, added the creatures to the map. Um, add encounter to combat tracker and that adds them to the combat tracker and places them on the map where you placed them earlier um, oh well I didn't like that that's weird I don't know what that button's for it's just through the NPC's random oh I guess if you haven't placed them if you haven't placed them you didn't feel like placing them you just throw in this encounter together you just do that and then place them manually so now you can move them around to wherever you want. Like these orcs are masters of the mystic arts. Hold down shift to move through walls. Hold down shift to move through walls. And so they're added. Click that to make them all visible. Surprise! And then you want to share the map and the NPC picture. And, and then when they win, add encounter to party sheet. Award XP. Any questions? Put them in the comments. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast, but thankfully this is a video and you can pause. Okay. So now combat is over. If you wanna if you accidentally add these guys to your thing again, go to trash, don't be scared. Click delete from tracker, mouse over, delete only foes. All right, now we never made it to the first round, but so there's a couple things you can do. You may decide that after that combat, if the players are milling around for like 10 minutes, I, I usually call that a short rest. So here are your options for that. You have rest, which in the standard D&D &D theme is a padlock with an eye. Um, don't, that closes the combat tracker window. So you have rest, if you click that, you have short rest, long rest, okay? And then here is your initiative menu. You can roll all initiatives for everybody, friend and foe, roll NPCs, roll PCs, clear all initiatives. But what I was going to say is if you go to the rest menu and say they take a short rest, this accomplishes all of that. It clears any effects that they have uh, with a limited duration and um, and resets the initiative and resets everything to round one. 
Also, if it's the end of the day and they're camping, you hit long rest, that will also refresh their spell slots, it will heal their wounds, it will do all of that. Straight out of the menu, right there, you, you control all that so players don't have to, the less players have to worry about the smoother the game goes. Okay. So the last thing I want to do, it's going to be fun finding these chapter markers, I should have noted them. The last thing I want to do is show you a tiny bit how I would plan out just an encounters only. Like I'm gonna, I know the role playing in my head, so I'm not gonna worry about doing story and all this complicated stuff. Just encounters, like to plan like a whole, like say a cave dive. So I already have a bunch of pre-made encounters under quick encounters. Um, but they all have their own maps. So I'm actually, no, let's go back to uncategorized here. There we go. So the first thing I do is, you know, pick a map um, of a cave or something. Um, my uh, Caves and Sewers map collection is free on uh, Fantasy Grounds Forge. So check that out. So I'm just going to grab a simple little cave here that I made in... Um, What's that program called? Dungeon Draft. All right, now, so I'm going to be working with with the in, encounters. So I'm going to close that, free up some space. So I like this huge. So you have this cave, and you want to make, you want to plan a bunch of things, right? Um, pretty sure I added line of sight. Yep. All right. So you already got your line of sight. You may I I added lighting the the whole thing set up ready to go so you don't even have to mess with that. All right, so say you want to have I don't know maybe four or five encounters. There's lots of little rooms and places you could do things. Um, so let's start by making a new encounter. Uh, you can't drag. We'll call it room one or something like that. Um, Grab some, let's just grab some trusty old orcs, set five of them, refresh the XP. Um, you can add the map icon onto this, but when you, now the players have already faced orcs now, so you can leave them identified. All right. And actually, I'm going to, here's the right click, click minimize. And I always lose that thing, but there's my, now I can open that quickly. Um, all right, so you throw your orcs in here. You know, so they're the first room the players will come to unless they turn right. Um, always got to have one in the back so they like, we're facing four orcs, and then it turns out to be five. All right, so you got them there. So the next thing you want to do is um, make sure you refresh the XP. You don't want to, oh, it's an easy one. Well, yeah, I mean, they're fourth level. We're not going for accuracy please so now your encounters done there's one encounter this is how quickly you can generate a whole dungeon so what I do is you click the little dragon here drag it onto your map and it adds a little pin and see you close your encounter window because watch this right, first thing I'm gonna do is drag your cave down here that way you have it on a, a hot key when you start because you close fantasy grounds and restart so now the characters get here. You've dragged them onto the, say we'll drag Tanner here. Can I do this this way? No, you have to do it from the combat tracker. So George is, has struck off on his own. Okay, so George is there. He's checking out the business. Um, when he gets where you think those orcs are going to notice him, you click this. And then the same thing. Add the combat tracker. Don't click that one. Uh, share the map if you haven't already. Oh, by the way, if you've started the map without an encounter in case you didn't know you right click click sharing share record and that shares it with the players sorry I forgot about that so now you've got this encounter here all right that's room one turn off this all right oh just click George there we go all right but now what if they they survived that encounter so let's just make another one I think you can see where this is going um, this one needs to be more difficult. The war chief is back there, along with an eye of Grumsh. 
Oh. Oh yeah, that was deadly. Don't they even? This is that war chief from before, but he ran away, so they never saw him. So unidentify him. Yeah. All right, room two. All right. These two will be more than enough. Place them. Add the pin. Ah, uh, see what I mean? If you don't, if you click too fast, so you add the pin. And when you close that, they'll disappear. So if you do that, pin for an encounter there, that one's already open. It'll open your encounter window. So in essence, you could just make an encounter for each room if you wanted. And that would be your whole adventure. And that's all the planning you'd have to do is just making the encounters. Um, and then if you want to do traps, there's even in the NPCs, there's some traps. Um, you can do that. And it has traps. You can you you can add those like to encounters and stuff. Um, and generally, the uh, the token will be the right size, and you can just leave it always hidden until they hit it. So, hopefully, that's enough information to get you started uh, DMing in Fantasy Grounds. Yeah, I know I I threw a few uh, add-ons in there, but none of them are, are strictly required without the enhanced encounter window I believe this is a little different here this setup doesn't do all that automatically um, it does have add encounter to combat tracker though so that's helpful um, but the rest of the stuff is, is not there I, I really like having the map available to click and would you look at that it did that automatically when you placed them huh okay so if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments um you know if, if you if you want to completely tear apart this tutorial if there's anything i missed i'll probably be making more of these when i think about it now that i have mastered obs so that's it for this time uh, happy hunting that's a terrible catchphrase